Hello, I'm Chris, and this is my Universal Power Window Kit video. Get your butt out of here. What the heck are you doing? So these Universal Kits are probably the most misleading aftermarket car part of all time. They'll have them listed as conversions, usually around $130, $150. And if you search and look around, you can find these way cheaper. I got this one for $62 shipping and everything. There'll be a link in the description. So these kits are gonna come with a bunch of little white pieces like this, a bunch of black pieces, wiring, and most importantly, the switches. You gotta be careful because you probably want those right there, but those are not gonna work in most applications. So this video is for people that bought one of these or maybe you have your eyes on a universal kit. I'm gonna do this stuff in order of importance because you have to modify two little parts on there and that may make it where they don't wanna return it when you decide you don't want this kit. There are very important things that have to be understood. So don't skip ahead until you get that aha moment and you figure out why I'm trying to explain this to people that may not know. So we're gonna be installing this on a 97 to 06 Jeep Wrangler door. This is considered a hard door to do. We got an old truck door. This is an easy one. I'll explain why this is easy and that's hard. Okay, so we're not doing anything on the vehicle. We're just installing the motor here. I'm gonna go up and down with it. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion about what I think. You have to make modifications to your door panel. So this thing has to pass the test. That's all I'm doing for you. I'm gonna test it out to let you know if these types are worth getting. I don't know, I've never used one before. So this is a power window kit. It is not a conversion kit because these are manual roll up windows. Manual windows use a regulator like this. That's the stud that the handle is attached to. So this kit right here does not modify or alter the manual regulator in any way. So when you get your manual door handle off, you see that stud, just like that one. This is not modified in the door at all in any way. So we're not converting to power windows. We are power assisting manual windows. So the motor is rolling them up for you in this little area. So if the motor is rolling it up and down for us in this area, the biggest thing you need to consider, you got a hole in your door panel and you got this thing sticking out. So what do we do about that? Okay, so get your door panel off. So this one had a weather shield. Do not throw this away, reuse this. So this is step one and two combined. Both of these things are super critical to determine if this kit is even gonna work in the first place. So this style right here, got a motor, all this looks good and checks out. And it's gonna have cables that drive this gear. Now if you think, man, cables, what the heck is that? So a lot of factory vehicles use cables, power and non-power, just like this Jeep right here. So notice how thin that is. Somewhere in those instructions, it's gonna talk about the maximum bend. It's gonna give you a measurement from the center here, center there. This one said 300 millimeters. That 30 centimeters is telling us that's the minimum bend. Well, I'm gonna tell you on this Jeep door, we're gonna to have to bend it a little more than that. So you need to roll the window down so the glass is in there and you're gonna to have to put the door panel back on a couple of times. First thing you do is you chill out, get comfortable because you're gonna spend about 15, 20 minutes figuring out how in the world are you gonna mount this motor in here where it doesn't hit and it's comfortable. We can see clearly we only have this area and we're gonna to have to put some bend on it about like that. So we got the door panel back on and it has to be clicked, snapped in and resting in its normal position. Measure the gap between the steel door and the door panel, we got a half an inch. And then this gear thing is about a quarter inch thick. So we're good on that half inch. And the fact that this stud sticks up three quarters of an inch is what makes this a difficult door. So the old Chevy truck door is easy because I can stick my finger in there and we got about an inch and a half before we meet the steel. And then if you look right here, it only sticks up like a freaking half an inch. Okay, we got our measurements. The next step is get your bag of wires and switches. So we're gonna take the little pods out for the switches and at first glance, you're gonna say, oh my God, there's no way I'm putting that on my car. Well, that's something that you're gonna have to deal with on this Jeep and why this kit is perfect for the Jeep is that these don't look that bad on there and you really do wanna run these because they're gonna cover up that freaking stud right there. So the driver, of course, is gonna use two switches. This is the easy one. This one's gonna cover up a lot. You just kinda of place it over it. We know that one's gonna work no matter what. We may need to trim these down on this particular door panel. This is gonna be the hard one, so do your testing with the single for the passenger door. So we get the small passenger pod, get the wiring and the switch. Okay, so if your stud sticks up high, that's five eighths, three quarters of an inch. You need to get this switch on there, get an idea if it's gonna pass the test. Okay, so we're trying to see what kind of gap we have. We do have about an eighth of an inch. 
Now, when we tighten this up, we can pull it in a little bit, and we can also grind a little bit off of that. So this one, with about an eighth of an inch, is going to pass the test. Then you have to ask yourself, does your switch match your door panel? In the case of the Jeep Wrangler, I think it looks just fine. On the old Chevy door, the switches are going to have zero problems, and they actually do not look that bad on an older vehicle. So if you don't want to run a switch right there, the kit's going to come with some plugs. You're going to have to figure out a setup. And ultimately, you're going to end up with a door panel that looks like that. In my opinion, that is unacceptable. So then the plug on the old Chevy door just looks odd. Just run the switch right there. So the gap is good for our motor. We've decided to run switches. Once you make it to that point, all that checks out, we can go ahead and install our motors. We got one and two, but there is a third obstacle before we start modifying and going crazy. You need to make sure that there's a combination of gears that's going to allow this to adapt to this stud right here. Find one of the small ones that fits over this. So then you're going to look at the bigger pieces. They have different lengths. So also take note at the top, it's got a little special groove. You want to line those up. So we got them pushed together. We got that little groove lined up. Okay, so now you got to spend some time with this bag and you're going to have to choose the right setup. Remember we had half an inch of gap right there. And if we use this one, we're way up too high. So we got to play around with some different options. I'm going to go ahead and figure this out because I am doing this for the first time as well. Okay, so figuring out the little white parts is going to be the hardest part. Take your time and you'll figure something out. This is what I came up with. See how we push it down and notice how this sticks up a little bit. So this is a universal kit. You may have to modify it to make it work. We put this down and we notice how the small gear sticks up at the top. It's being blocked by these little grooves, so we need to grind those out. Do that at your own risk. I'm comfortable with it because it's not going to change anything. This handle bottoms out right here, so it's not going to hurt it. To cut those out, and allow the gear to drop down further, giving us more coverage. That's exactly what you want. Now when we put this piece it goes down further and notice a little stud right there now do this at your own risk but i'm going to go ahead and cut that off flush with the top of that stud so we got that ground down flush now the kit's going to have the snap rings for that and these long skinny screws now once these long skinny screws screw down that odd keyway i'm not into that i'm not going to put the long skinny screws we're not permanently doing this right now on the Jeep, but if I was, I would wash this because these are covered in oil and I would just super glue that. Once I got it all figured out and adjusted, that's exactly what I do. Just super glue it or JB weld it and just have a permanent little piece like that. So we got this piece ready, slide it in there, groove for the snap ring. So the snap ring is in place now. So we got it together. Give it another test fit before we start screwing stuff down. Make sure it bottoms out. We got about a half an inch right there. Stud is flush. Everything checks out on this side. So then you take your universal brackets. They're going to mount like this. Play around with this. Figure out how you're going to attach it. You just want to secure these so they don't move one way or the other. So let me go ahead and figure this out and we'll see what I came up with. It took me about 10 15 minutes to figure this out. You're going to have to screw the little brackets. They only go in certain positions. You're going to have to cut your brackets if necessary. All right, so looking at this a second time, we probably need to move this bracket right here. So let's go ahead and get an idea how these get screwed on there. All right, so this stuff can get real tricky. Just remember to mark it. So we're gonna move it over. So the brackets are easy to install. It's just difficult figuring out where you're gonna put these. So the only thing I don't like so far is that that hole right there is not on the center. So when this moves, it's gonna be doing that just a little bit. So the kit's going to have some little shock absorbers and screws. Let's go ahead and get this mounted and we're going to mount that one with the little shock absorbers. So the screws in the kit are low profile but they're not self tapping so just find a drill bit that's smaller. Okay, so be super careful when you're drilling holes. Don't hit your glass. Pay attention to your door panel. This one dips in so we want to screw farther to the outside. So we're going to mount this one as far out as possible with these little shock absorber pieces. Put this in there first and it's going to have a little metal insert second. All right, so when you put that screw in there, you got to feel in there and make sure it's not going to hit nothing. This is fully secure for the demo. 
But on the vehicle, I would put three screws on each bracket. Just make 100% sure nothing's gonna come loose. And I promise you, if you make it this far in your project, things are gonna start feeling a lot better. So we got it all wired up. We have to wire all the switches and we got it connected straight to a battery. Got a battery charger on two amps, trickle to simulate the alternator charging. I've never seen one of these kits before. Let's put it to the test. So the switch would mount right here and cover that up. As far as appearance, it passes the test 100%. Totally goes with this Jeep interior. Let's put this thing to the test. Down. Okay went up and down with this enough to give you my opinion on a vehicle that never had power windows as long as you could get away with this switch and it passes the test on your door panel i highly highly recommend this kit it just blew my mind it was only 62 dollars. that's for both doors everything so it did hesitate a little bit but it went all the way up all the way down it's sealed it sounds just like any other power windows so for a Jeep Wrangler that never had power windows, that kit is awesome. So on a 7387 Chevy truck, I'm 50-50 with it because these trucks had a power window option. I actually have a video showing where I went and got the regulators and everything to convert these doors over. So, so that kit on a 70 Chevelle, absolutely not in a million years. So on a 2003, now this truck has power everything, but I don't think those switches would look that bad on a truck like this with roll-up windows. So on my 88 G20 work van, I don't think they'd look good on this van just because of door panel style. So here's the Jeep. I just put the half doors on it. I'm trying to sell those full doors and if I don't, I'm just gonna keep them. And I will have a future video if I don't sell them where we do the power windows 100% and test them out and everything on the vehicle. So the kit was $62. I don't have any regrets buying it. I'm really glad that I got off my butt and actually just tested on these doors. So now I know that it does work. Highly recommend it for the Jeep doors, not so much for other vehicles. That's it for the video. If you enjoy, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.